France passes a law allowing legal surveillance of its citizens, a U.S. court deems warrantless cell phone tracking to be legal and unleash the hounds. Netflix announces Fido, its security analysis and response system. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for Wednesday, May 6, 2015. Your summary of what's threatening our security, privacy, and internet freedom. I would like to start with a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the relaunch of this show. We couldn't be more proud of this awesome community. If you are new to ThreatWire on the Hack5 channel, this is the show that we did for a year on TechFeed, and now we brought it back. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Halfway through 2014, privacy advocates got a surprising victory in the world of data tracking. An 11th Circuit Court in Florida said it was illegal to track a person via their cell phone data without a warrant because it violated his reasonable expectation of privacy and the Fourth Amendment. This was during the U.S. versus Davis trial. Go us! Unfortunately, that same victory has been overturned as of May 5th by the same circuit court, deeming it within the guidelines of the law to track a person's cell phone without a warrant. They overturned this decision because the cell phone location data isn't the user's property, but the phone carrier's, something that falls under the third-party doctrine. The ruling reads, Davis can assert neither ownership nor possession of the third party's business records he sought to suppress. Instead, those cell tower records were created by Metro Metro PCS stored on its own premises and subject to its control. While the defendant in this case was using an older model phone, which lacks the precision of tracking in today's smartphones, and this is pointed out in the ruling, it may be misinterpreted by other lower courts and assumed to be about all smartphones. The constitutionality of cell phone tracking is still in a legal gray area until it's brought up to the Supreme Court. Apparently, Netflix is into open source development as well as streaming all the TV shows. Huh, who'd have thought? They just announced the availability of their open source system called FIDO, short for Fully Integrated Defense Operation, which will detect, analyze, and respond to security threats. The download and explanation is over on GitHub, but it's basically an automated layer for evaluating possible security threats and responding to them accurately to lessen the manual workload that these kind of flags are to network admins. Netflix robots. Hmm. And from over the pond, the French parliament cast a sweeping yes vote on a new law allowing intelligence gathering after terrorist attacks in January left 17 dead. Authorities will be able to spy on digital communications of anyone deemed linked to a terrorist, to the extent of even being able to put cameras in private residences and enabling keyloggers on a computer. Recordings could be kept for a month and metadata for five years. Yikes. Our featured comment today comes from The Aftermath, who in response to Facebook's internet.org announcement says, how can this show even suggest anything Zuckerberg does as a good thing? You are supposed to be proud internet supporters and privacy conscious individuals, yet you mention the scum that is Facebook in a positive light. It's disingenuous to your viewers. And I would like to say, you've got a point, but here's what I think. Facebook.com has had a long history of meddling in data of its users and using that information for profit via advertisements and data collection. Their terms of service changes regularly, as do their security controls. We've actually been delving into decentralized social networks on Hack5, which I think you might find interesting. But Facebook.com is a social network. The company has been a supporter of a free internet for all because it truly is crucial to have that access in this day and age. Internet.org is supposed to do this, and I am supporting of giving that access to anybody who doesn't currently have it. Of course, as a developer, you're still going to have to play by Facebook's rules. Have a look at their technical and their practical guidelines, as Patrick mentioned, as well as their legal terms, which you have to abide by if you want your website to be included. They also mention your website can't include SSL and TLS. It will work on the Android app, but this is a huge concern for uh, pretty much everyone, and we don't know if they're going to allow VPNs as well. This is going to be something that I'm going to keep a very close eye on. Thanks for the comment, The Aftermath, and of course, if you have any thoughts on today's stories, leave them below. If you find value from this and you can spare a few cents an episode, or maybe even a month, please consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash threatwire, and we may be able to feature your adorable fur babies like this one in our next episode. 
Now we're hoping to reach our three times a week milestone goal with a rotation of Patrick Norton, Darren Kitchen, and myself. So throughout the month of May, we'll be giving you a taste of just that. Your contributions help keep the show completely independent and ad free. If you can't donate, a like, a share, a subscribe goes a really long way too. And you can find all of our episodes, our links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Shannon Morse. I'll see you on the internet.